Right. Cool. So, hey, how are you? Thank you for, for being here today. Uh, so I would like to start with, with a question. How many of you uh, use open source projects on, on your day-to-day -day work, right? Like probably all of you, right? It's completely impossible to, to be a software developer without actually using an open source project. But how many of you are actively contributing to an open source project? Well, I know that you, Alex, you, you do, right? So. What if I tell you that you can work on the largest projects in the world and learning and working alongside the most brilliant people in our industry? You probably, some people are think that, that I'm crazy, but open source gives you that opportunity and, and much more. And, and you would think that, that the, like, there is many, many people contributing on these projects that move the, the world, but that's, not un, that's completely untrue, right? Java is run in 3 billion devices. There are 20 million uh, Java developers in the world. So guess how many people are building the OpenJDK? Any guess? It's 200 people. So only 200 people are deciding how 20 million developers develop and how 3 billion devices work. And that's the same for any open source project. Uh, open source changed my life when I became a core contributor of Bootstrap, which is one of the largest open source projects related to open source. And I would like today to teach you how you can become an open source developer too, and that's something that might change your life and change your career too. So to start with, I would like to present you or introduce you to four people. The first one is Otavio, who is here on the right of this picture. He's one of those 200 OpenJDK developers now, but he was working on a government agency where there was lots of bureaucracy, uh, nothing moved really, uh, especially in Brazil, right? I don't know how things are here in Germany, but in Brazil, like, there is lots of politics, nothing really works. And as he was developing a, a thing for the government, he started contributing and writing specs for the OpenJDK. That movement, end up uh, getting the attention of Tommy Tribe that hired him. And then uh, now he's a Java champion. He is a, a multiple time winner of the GS JSP award. Uh, and that simple thing about contributing to OpenJDK completely changed his career and his life. The person next to him is called Eder. Eder used to work at a cons consultancy. One of those clients was a bank and they needed a decision engine. So he went and implemented Jules and started contributing to Jules. That got the attention of Red Hat, who offered him a job, and now he's a Java champion too, and he's leading one of the, the Jules team. Now, the other two people I'd like to introduce to you today is these two. The first on the right is Bruno. He used to work in a bank five years ago, uh, and he's a security engineer. Of course, working in a bank, it wasn't really fun with all the restrictions that are on the banking industry. So he started work, uh, contributing to a project called Torquebox that also got the attention of the people from Red Hat who offered him a, a job in a small community called AeroGear. Now, uh, he then became, or today, he's a leader of the Kicklog team, which is the security product for Red Hat. And probably my favorite story of the open source is the person beside him whose name is Daniel. Seven years ago, uh, Daniel is uh, an Android developer and he started contributing at this small open source project called AeroGear. Now, at one point, the uh, leader of the community, his name is Jay, he saw that 80% of the Android co code was written by Daniel. So, of course, he offered him a job and Daniel rejected it. So Jay was like scratching his head, like why does a guy that clearly loves a project and works for free is rejecting a well-paid project working for a company like Red Hat, which is pretty cool, uh, and also working remotely. So he asked, and Daniel's answer was that he was rejecting it because he didn't spoke English at all, right? He, he was using Google Translator to participate on, on this community. So Daniel, uh, so Jay, who isn't uh, dumb at all, he offered him a job anyway, he hired him, and he sent him 
uh, an English teacher every week to his house for two years. Uh, until now, he became the leader, eventually, of the Android team within Red Hat. And he just, a few months ago, was hired uh, by Shopify to work in Canada in English, right? So uh, that movement and those, those contributions actually changed his life. And both Daniel and uh, Bruno were my mentors when I became an open source contributor. So six years ago, I was hired by Red Hat to improve the user experience of a small community called AeroGear. Now, as a good designer that I was, uh, I didn't knew Git, I didn't knew basically anything. So I took the code from GitHub, downloaded it, made some changes on the code base, and then zip it and send it to the mailing list. Of course, the community were thinking like, what's this guy doing, right? How can we consume this? It makes no sense. So they were patient enough to teach me how to do Git, to teach me how to interact with the community. Then from there, um, I went to another project called Patternfly within Red Hat. And nowadays, I'm uh, the leader that, uh, that of the team that creates Dashboard at O0. I'm also a core team member of Bootstrap. I'm a contributor to Eclipse Foundation. And also, I wrote some articles for CSS tricks and a list apart. And since open source changed my life, I would like to, to tell you how you can uh, do the first steps to get there. So let's first uh, define what open source is. And open source is, before everything else, a community, right? It's basically a group of people that are passionate about something, and they get together to, to solve it or, or to work on that. And open source needs every single one of you. Historically, code and developers are mo mainly like the most obvious uh, type of person that can participate of an open source because uh, at the end of the day, most open source communities are software based, right? But by no means, code is the only thing that makes an application or a software. Una Kravitz, who is a great uh, open source designer, she says that the diversity is what can take open source from where it is to where it could be. And she's not only talking about diversity of mindsets like designers and developers, but also diversity of genders, of colors, cultures. Any one uh, of them alone will produce something worse than all of them together. And there are actually numbers and statistics that show that the most, the most uh, successful communities are also the more, the more diverse ones. Designers are critical for a good open source community. They will uh, take a unique uh, point of view, right? They will defend the users that cannot uh, participate on a community since mostly the contributors are also users of the community, of the product or the project. Uh, they will have a unique point of view and they will make sure that every decision that the community makes has their users in mind. Also, writers are super important, right? Because let's be honest, we are really, really bad writers, especially like designers and probably developers. We are all are, right? And if you don't believe me, just go to any open source project, read the documentation and you'll probably see what I mean. And writing is really, really hard, right? But if you don't write good things and if you don't communicate correctly in an environment where we all participate in probably not our first language, then the community will probably fail. And documentation, it's never up to date, right? And eventually I'm going to show you how documentation is probably a really good first step for, to introduce you to any open source community. And sometimes writers become stars of their communities. For example, my friend Gircham, he's from the Netherlands, uh, and he was a technical writer for the NetBeans community. With his uh, documentation and getting started uh, articles, he guided thousands of developers to use the NetBeans project. And eventually he became the most, the most acclaimed person of the community without ever writing a single line of code. I remember that without good communication, there is no community. And what we write can be the difference between someone feeling welcome or someone feeling rejected from our projects. There is also work for people that don't want to code, right? Developers that don't want to code. 
And there is administrative work like reviewing issues uh, or reviewing PRs, tagging issues, uh, going to chats and, and making like, things work under the hood. For example, in Bootstrap, we have a, a guy from Belgium and he's always reviewing PRs. And then there is another person from France uh, that he's always tagging issues and making sure that, that we're triaging them correctly. Uh, and they are vital for the community to, to be alive. So I hope that by now I convince you that you all have a place on an open source community. So let's talk a little bit about working for free, right? Why am I recommending you to spend your time in a place where you will be vulnerable, working alongside completely strangers and getting not payment in, in, in exchange? So open source is, before anything, an act of love. It's a donation that you are giving back to the industry. And for on one hand, you're giving it that, and you're donating your time, and open source gives you some things back. Probably the most important thing that we have as professionals is uh, our connections, right? our network. And not all of us live in a place where it's a hub of the technology, even though I'm from Buenos Aires, and Buenos Aires have a really active community. Buenos Aires is just not San Francisco, right? And some people don't have either the time or the energy to go to, to meetups or go to events. I mean, I have three kids. It's really hard for me to, to leave them during the weekends and go to a meetup. But open source opened the doors to work alongside a huge pool of really interesting and really smart people across the world. And you don't have to go through universities, like super fancy universities, or uh, I know, like it, it, many, many interviews to, be, to get there and to work with these people. You can just like go there and, and work with them. And remember that almost without exception, all the, the superstars of our industry, the people that we admire and follow, they are all working on open source. So if you want to learn with them, if you want to criticize their work, or if you want them to criticize your work, you can just go there and do it, right? The doors are completely open. The other uh, thing you can do is show what you know, right? So even though getting a job should not be your main goal uh, while you participate on open source, uh, there are countless cases where people got jobs while participating on open source. So by doing that, you again, you don't have to go through, through interviews to show what you know, right? For example, my, my friend Daniel Passos, he didn't knew English, and English is a requirement to work at Red Hat, but he could show what he, he knew without even going through any requisite or any interview. The other good thing is that you can know what people are going to be working with you before accepting a job, right? So no surprises there. I mean, if you want to work, let's say, at Red Hat, and you know uh, that you want to, uh, to work with the, I know, uh, the Drools team, you can go and, and work with them for a little bit and see how they are and, and how they interact with you. You also can play with, with the bleeding edge technology as a personal level, so it's really hard to, to, to find the same scale in a personal project or in a hackathon, so it's super fun to, to work on, on the open source. Uh, overall. And finally, and mainly like, like the most important thing is that it's addictive. And it's really hard for me to explain the feeling that you get once you see your name attached to an open source project. Uh, and that feeling creates like positive feedback loop uh, that, that makes you want more of that. My first contribution to Bootstrap was six letters, right? Th there was missing a default flag on a, C on a SAS variables. Um, and when that was merged, and I saw my name uh, there within the project, and I, I, I saw that, that those seven letters were, were going to impact so many projects across the world, uh, it made me like, want to give more, right? I mean, who, who has ever used Bootstrap in, in any project here? For, right, so you two are using my, my seven letters <laughs> for your projects. So hopefully uh, I show you that there are places for everyone on communities and also uh, what you get back from participating on open source. So now let's talk about how to find a community. Now my advice is to look for the things that you like and you use. So think, think to yourself, like, what are the things that, that you would like to solve? 
And probably there are many people that want to solve the exact same problem that they are getting together to do it. So, for example, if you are like me and you are weirdos and you like CSS, there are places like Bulma, Bootstrap, Tachyons, you know, uh, Foundation, uh, or design systems like Butterfly, uh, the Salesforce design system that, that you can go and participate. I chose Bootstrap not only because I wouldn't be able to find any other larger CSS code base with more most impact than Bootstrap, but also because at the time I was working in a project that had as a dependency Bootstrap. So when I saw something that I wanted to add or when I saw something broken, I would just contribute it upstream and then my contributions would be useful for other people. Now, if you like JavaScript and you're using a, pro a project based on React, uh, then you can probably contribute to React. Or if you are a Java developer and you use Spring, you can probably go and, and contribute to Spring, right? Uh, there are also uh, places where you can look for projects. Uh, GitHub has a really good explorer. And then there is a project called, called Triage, where you can type the language you want to contribute, and you will get different issues that have relations to, to uh, the language that you want to contribute. But it really doesn't matter uh, where you want to contribute. There are three things to keep in mind as you do it. Brian Lisam, who is a really good friend of mine and, and a large open source contributor, uh, he once told me that contributing to open source is like working within a fishbowl. Everything you do is going to be transparent, it's going to be, be registered, um, and it's going to be visible, right? So that will get you in a place where you're going to be vulnerable. But a good open source community will take care of you. Uh, so once you choose a community, read the, the code of conduct. And if you feel disrespected, uh, that's not something you should bear. So uh, if the community doesn't act swiftly, it's probably a place that doesn't, doesn't uh, deserve you. Now, having said that, uh, you should probably build a thick skin because it's a place where you're going to be criticized and you're going to be criticizing others. And that's, why, that's why having respect as you do it is super important. And the other thing that you should think about is uh, having really good communication. You're going to be working alongside people from different cultures where rarely English is going to be their first language. Some cultures, they think that uh, being respectful is getting direct criticism to you. And some others will just not tolerate that, right? And I can see that in Bootstrap, we have a contributor from uh, the Netherlands, and when, when, when he talked with another one who is from, from Japan, you get a really interesting interaction. Uh, the guy from the Netherlands, he's really direct and really like brutal on his criticisms. And the other one, he like talks around things. But since they both want the best for the project, uh, they are humble, they are positive, then the result is always really, really good. And the last thing you, you should like, take in consideration is having trust, right? You will see as, as you uh, start contributing that people usually trust in each other in the open source communities. Um, and that generates a really uh, nice bond and it allows you to show what, uh, what you are capable of. Now, there is a thing about trust, which is that you should build it. So start always with really small contributions. And we're going to talk about this later, but it is critical, right? You should build your trust with small contributions. So by now, you should probably know how to find a community. And let's talk about the tools you need to contribute to open source. And this is probably going to be super basic for you all, right? You need basically three things. To know Git, to know your way around the command line, and to know how to use a communication channel. And when I say the command line, I say a very basic and fundamental use of the command line. I mean, I can do it, and I'm really not an expert in the command line at all. So if you can run NPM or Maven or any of the, the commands and you can follow instructions, you probably can work on any open source project. Um, there is a really good book written by Remy Sharp that, that is an introduction to, to the open, to, sorry, to the command line. Um, if you don't know uh, how to use it, I recommend this book highly. 
Now, Git is the language of open source. And there are many Git visual and desktop clients, like, I know, Git Kraken, GitHub Desktop. I recommend you skip them and just use how to, how to I mean, how to use a Git on the command line. Uh, it's probably a steeper learning curve, but you're going to get better results. Almost every single open source project is a uh, have in GitHub. Uh, so you also need a GitHub account and know your way around GitHub. Uh, if you don't know Git, there, are, uh, there is a really good resource, try.github.io. It will give you cheat sheets uh, and other learning places. Uh, even if you know Git, I recommend you checking them out. There are like some hidden uh, gems there to, to improve your Git game. And finally, uh, every single con community has a communication channel. Usually, there is a mailing list. Uh, for example, in Bootstrap, we have Slack channel for uh, users. Then we have discussions on, of code in GitHub issues and PRs. And then Stack Overflow for discussions among implement implementations. So the hardest part is done, right? You know exactly how to choose a community. You know how to participate. Uh, so let's talk about how to get your first steps. And if you can remember one thing about this talk, remember this. Start with small contributions. The smallest they are, the better. Because at the end of the day, one contribution is going to value one commit. And it doesn't really matter if the commit is one change of a semicolon or if it's a huge feature. I'm going to show you why that's really important, right? The other reason is that when you send a really large contribution and you're not well known in the community, Probably, I mean, me as a, as a maintainer, I will have to download it and test it carefully. So it's, it will go to the end of my line of things to do. And while if you send something really simple and really small, I will just merge it and then move on. Now, think about the things that nobody wants to do, right? For example, documentation. Documentation is a great place to start. Go to any open source project, read through like how to contribute, try to follow the instructions. You will for sure fail at some point. So just like change the instructions with what you learn and send it to your community. Those are great way to start. Other things are tests, right? Who likes to write tests? Nobody right like that. So who write, who wants to like or I know improving the develop the deploying pipeline or things like that, right? Anything that nobody wants to do, they are really, really good places to start. Now some communities have a tags on their issues, uh, mark help wanted or good first issue. And now during October, there is Hacktoberfest. So if you don't know what Hacktoberfest is, it's basically a project uh, lead by, by DigitalOcean. So uh, some, some communities have like this first good issue or, or tags like that. So if you make four contributions to open source during October, they will ship you a t-shirt. Like just a nice gift to, to get. Uh, but that, those PRs can be anything. It can be documentation, it can be whatever you want, as long as you participate on, on open source. There are also uh, less shiny but important things to do, like administrative work uh, on the communities. So if you can go and like, read issues or, or help reviewing PRs or help users in the community, that's super, super important for any community. And of course, you can write code, right? And as you write code, sometimes you are going to fail and you're going to screw up. And that's OK. One of my first contributions to Bootstrap um, was changing the rounded corners of a bottom from 10 M's to 50%, right? And what it does is instead of making a peel which has rounded corners at the end, it makes an oval shape. And I, I should know, right? right? It's, it's basic CSS, right? But I, I didn't test it. I wrote it and sent the PR. Now, Mark Goddard, who is the, the creator of Bootstrap, he's also the director of design in GitHub. Instead of telling me, go and learn CSS and then come back and talk to us, he created a code pen for me to learn what was wrong there. And that respect to my time and my effort as a contributor is something I like to mimic, right? And, and as you make mistakes, you will see how there are many, many kind people that, that will help you on, on the way to, to becoming a better developer. So now that you know how to do your first steps, let's talk about leveling up. And I would like to tell you a secret. 
there is no one participating in open source. No one. I mean, probably here in Eclipse, in EclipseCon, you will see that people are super contributors and they are all over the place, but those are rare, right? Nobody's working on open source. And I'm going to show you how by making small commits, you can participate in the largest projects of the world and you can become a contributor to those projects. So, so let, let me just show you a, a little demo here. So who here is a Java developer? Yeah, most of you, right? So who knows Rx, Rx Java, uh, Reactive Java? Yeah, right. So it's a very po popular project, right? It's used by, by thousands of projects. So it's currently being developed by 239 developers. And if you scroll down the list of the most popular, um, the most popular contributors, you will see that with just one commit, you become a top 100 uh, contributor to that community. And that guy there, he made like one plus one minus. So he deleted one thing and he added one. This one here, he didn't even delete anything. He just added one, right? It's probably a period missing on the documentation. I don't know, it's a really, really tiny contribution. But that contribution made him access the top 100 contributors of this project. And I mean, now I became a manager six months ago. And as a manager, as I'm hiring, if I see a, a developer that has contributed to tells me that he has contributed to an open source community, it will caught my attention, even though I will eventually go and see what he has done, right? But that doesn't really matter. I mean, eventually you will stand out over other people. If you scroll up, like, if you make two contributions, you will like be higher. If you make four contributions, you are going to be top 50. Uh, I think in my life I, I made like 40 contributions to Bootstrap and I'm a core contributor, but I, lots, I do lots of administrative work too on the community. Uh, but you will see how things like Spring Boot, right? Who uses Spring Boot? Right, so Spring Boot is being developed by, uh, I move it there, but it's around like 400 developers. Uh, and if you go down, if you make two contributions to Spring Boot, you're going to be top 100 developer of, of Spring Boot. And for example, here he deleted three characters, right, in his life. Uh, same happened with, you know, Wava is even smaller, it's like 100 and something contributors. Uh, and again, like if you'd make two contributions, you're going to be top five, if you're going to 50. Uh, and then it becomes at the end like uh, like exponential because those are people that are paid to contribute on those projects. But other than the top 20, all of them, it's really, really simple to get into this project. Uh, there is a testing tool for Java called Mojito, I don't know if you know it. There is no one really <laughs> contributing to this project. If you make two contributions, you are top 10. Uh, then like, same thing with uh, Hadoop, right? Uh, so the open source war is completely open for anyone to participate. We are kind of desperate for people to do it. Uh, and everything you do has lots of value. And you, you, don't, even, you don't even know, need to know the language, right? I, I'm not a developer. I don't know how to write basically anything that is not CSS and HTML. Now, for since I wanted my t-shirt for Oktoberfest, I, I went to some communities and I just added this, right? Like before installing, uh, before like uh, doing the contributions, uh, you need to install MongoDB and, and Node. And I mean, I knew that because I tried to run the, the getting started and I couldn't run it. So that's a really good contribution. Uh, this is another one, right? Uh, this is um, Docusarius is the documentation project for, for Facebook. So it's, it's what, what's running the documentation of React, for example. Uh, and as I was running the contribution guidelines, I noticed that I couldn't do it. So it just changed it, right? You need to run like yarn start v1, right? And I, I knew this because I failed at doing it. So Probably if you run any project, you are going to fail because they are, every documentation is, is out, out, outdated. Right? Projects go on, but documentation doesn't follow through. So I went in, I made four contributions in really simple projects. There is a, a period that is missing in one other place, and I changed it, and now I'm getting the t-shirt next month. There you go. <laughs> uh, right. Oops. Okay. Mm. 
So sometimes when I show this, I hear people saying that they don't have time. And that's a valid point, right? We don't have time. But I propose you to block half an hour every week on your calendar. And that's a half an hour with, between meetings, that, that half an hour that you go for a coffee or you do nothing, and just dedicate that half an hour to see or participate in one open source project. And that half an hour might be the half an hour that completely changed your career as it did change mine. I remember that every single star in the industry has worked on open source or is still working on open source. So maybe the next superstar of our industry is sitting here in, in this room, right? We, we just don't know. So I invite you to participate on open source and uh, become like the first the people that create the path for the future. So thank you very much. <laughs> now, if you want to read really more about this, I wrote an article for uh, Elisa Park. It basically says the same as I talked about in the article. <laughs>